Hello. So this is video three out of five for my Halloween themed uh, October horror videos. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Barry Sonnenfeld's 1991 film, The Addams Family. So this uh, obviously is based on uh, the cartoon strip that then became a 1960s sitcom. But in, in the 90s, The Addams Family was re-envisioned, first with the film uh, The Addams Family in 1991, and then later with Addams Family Values, which is the greatest Thanksgiving movie of all time. Um, and in honor of Thanksgiving, I will be doing a video on Adam's Family Values, so look forward to that. The Adam's Family is an interesting movie because for all the sort of macabre, for all the darkness, for all the gothicness, for all the sort of discussion of murderers and psychopaths and things like this in the Adam's Family tree, it's actually a really sort of heartwarming movie. Um, so if you don't know the basic sort of premise of the Adams Family, they are uh, this very sort of spooky family. Um, the children, Wednesday and Pugsley, are constantly trying to sort of murder each other. Uh, Morticia Adams is uh, this sort of slinky, sexy, vampire-type uh, woman. Uh, Gomez Adams is this sort of suave, suit-wearing swashbuckler, almost. Like, he goes around sword fighting, he has a, a sort of nice, uh, thin mustache, He's very sort of suave and charming. Um, Uncle Fester, who's actually the sort of central, one of the, basically the central figure of the 1991 Barry Sonnenfeld film. Um, Fester is this sort of weird, creepy, hulking guy, uh, bald head, very, very... Uh, heavy eye, not eye makeup, but like black eyes kind of thing. Uh, their butler Lurch is this giant sort of Frankenstein type guy who never speaks. He just sort of grunts. Uh, Han uh, thing is their is their pet, which is hand just runs disembodied hand. Just imagine from here on up doesn't exist. That's uh. That's the thing. The grandma is this sort of witch, uh, witch voodoo uh, kind of woman. And basically they live in this giant spooky mansion with like electric chairs and dead flowers and all of this stuff. So the reason that I say this is really a sort of heartwarming tale despite all this macabre imagery is because it's fundamentally a story about family not finding out where you belong in your family so the film starts out fester and gomez who are brothers had a falling out years ago 25 years ago um over twins uh siamese twins Flora and Fauna. Um, because Gomez pursued both of them, Fester, uh, Fester left. He went to the Bermuda Triangle. They haven't heard any, the Adamses haven't heard anything from Fester for 25 years, but they've been conducting seances to try and get in touch with him on the, the presumption that he's dead. Their lawyer who's broke and owes money to people, loan sharks, um, the lawyer comes up with a plan that doesn't initially work. But when the loan shark 
shows up with her son. And I put son in scare quotes, which is... I maybe shouldn't have done that, because I may give something away, but I, you'll get it. So the lone shark shows up with her son, who's a dead ringer for Fester. And they put together a plan where uh, Gordon, which is the name of the son, is going to go in and pretend to be Fester. And, th and, and basically, they're going to steal all of the Adams' money. This works reasonably well because Gordon is a criminal anyway and because he's uh, used to violence anyway he's relatively okay with going into this bizarre world of the Adamses um, but the Adamses Morticia Wednesday and then later on uh, Gomez start to become suspicious. There are things that Fester doesn't remember, things that he doesn't seem to know that he that Fester should know, so they become somewhat suspicious. And this raises all sorts of problems. Um, because at the same time that that's happening, Gordon becomes increasingly attached to the Adamses he starts to become really invested in this family. While simultaneously his mother, who's who's playing the doctor, who sort of brought him back from, from the Bermuda Triangle, um, she's continually guilting him about his engagement with the Adamses and about not finding the vault with all the money yet. So he's torn between this desire that he has to please his mother and this genuine affection that he has for the Adams. Adamses. So this is this is Gordon slash Fester sort of central dilemma in the film is what does it mean to be part of a family? What does it mean to love family members and, and to have them love you? To for family to be a place that you belong. And the film sort of explores this through these various dimensions, these questions of guilt, these questions of suspicion, these questions of choosing your loyalties. And so, for instance, we get this great scene where uh, the Lone Shark, Gordon's mother, has, has basically guilted him into staying home rather than going and seeing Wednesday and Pugsley perform in a play. So they're doing a, a, a scene from uh, Shakespeare, and Fester has been helping them get this ready. He's been helping them, like, gore it up, basically. Like, he they, he engineers these sort of tremendous amounts of fake blood to spew from uh, their, their body parts when they get slashed open. And... He's like the the children come to his bedroom door to ask him to to reconsider to come to the play, and he you can see him. It's Christopher Lloyd, by the way, who plays Fester. Um, we can see him just like sitting in his room, just like this, clear, like clearly in distress about not being able to go to this play because his mother has guilted him into staying home to do this robbery. Um, but he decides ultimately that it's it's better for him to go to the play, and so he does it. And this is this sort of symbol of choosing loyalties. And while he so he goes back on this because the lawyer figures out that as the elder brother, Fester is actually entitled to all of the the money and the property anyway. So they end up using that as the sort of basis for. Uh, how to get the money that they can't find in the vault. But eventually, when 
Morticia uh, comes to sort of try and reason with Vester after the Adamses have been kicked out of their home by the, the lawyer. And while they're, so they're torturing her and Gomez shows up to rescue her. And it's at that point that, that Gordon chooses. He chooses the Adamses as his family rather than the lone shark, his mother. And that that's a really significant choice. Like, it's about... It's a really, again, important choice and a, a, a significant choice because it's about finding where you belong. And it's an idealization of family, obviously. I mean, there's a lot of terrible families out there. But... The Adamses are this fascinating family because they they are deeply devoted to one another. Like they are so they are a sort of perverse embodiment of the ideal of family values. And so Fester choosing this this family is the ultimate sort of success of that of that idea in the film. Um and then What's inter what's sort of ultimately interesting, but in some ways undermines that idea of like finding your place. I don't know if it does actually. What complicates, I'll say that, what complicates that idea of finding your place is that when Fester slash Gordon uh, is basically driving off his mother and the lawyer, he does it with a book. Um, so in the Adams's library, books like uh, Gone with the Wind actually blow. You get wind out of the book. So he picks up a book about hurricanes and opens it, and they're sort of spun around in this whirlwind and then driven out the window. And lightning from the book strikes Gordon in the head, which jogs his memory that he actually is Fester Adams, and he was in the Bermuda Triangle, and he got amnesia. And this this woman basically picked him up out of a tuna net and s- convinced him that he was her son. So, like, it, it, the movie ends with this revelation that the thing that that Gordon was pretending all along was, in fact, the truth. And it's, yeah... It's heartwarming. Plus, you have Christina Ricci as uh, as Wednesday Adams. If you were a kid in the '90s and you ever had any sort of goth phase, or if you were ever into goth stuff, Christina Ricci was one of the the one of the icons there. So you got that in the movie as well. Can't go wrong. <laughs>